uh, I'm delighted to have been asked to talk about the straight to test pathway for patients with suspected bowel cancer. Uh, I'm Tim Wilson, one of the consultant um, uh, colorectal surgeons and the, the current lead for uh, lower GI cancers within the hospital. We're very proud of the straight to test pathway which has been operational in the trust for the last few years. Um, Covid's obviously had a little bit of an impact on the pathway but I'm pleased to say it's up and running again. Uh, so patients who are suspected of having cancer by their GPs are referred to the hospital on an accelerated pathway so that they can be seen, uh, assessed and cancer can be diagnosed or excluded uh, within a short period of time. Um, and that was traditionally known as the two week wait pathway because patients would have to be seen um, within two weeks having been referred from their GPs uh, within hospital. Uh, so for lower GI cancers, so bowel cancers, um, traditionally we would see patients in uh, for an outpatient consultation to review their symptoms uh, and decide what tests would be appropriate for them. Uh, the reason for this is that most of the tests for, for bowel cancer uh, involve some kind of preparation for the bowel. Um, uh, and colonoscopy, which is the gold standard test for patients with bowel cancer, is an invasive procedure, so it's not suitable for all patients. Some of the older and frailer patients, there may be more risks involved in putting them through the test than benefits. And so for that reason, we've always had to review patients in the outpatient clinic uh, beforehand. With a straight test pathway, what we aim to do is to receive a referral from the GP and triage that uh, and request the tests for patients straight away uh, without having the delay of them being seen for an outpatient consultation beforehand. Um, now this has been thought of for a while with colorectal cancer patients, but I think concerns um, that um, people in general practice who are not familiar with colonoscopy and how it's performed may not be the best people to judge uh, whether a patient is fit enough for a colonoscopy or not, and that's been a barrier to us implementing straight to test. Uh, a few years ago, the, the targets uh, that were set by the people that control the cancer pathway uh, changed a little bit. So instead of patients being seen for their first assessment or test within two weeks, um, we are now required to try and diagnose um, patients with cancer to either exclude it or diagnose it within 28 days. Um, so if you're having to wait two weeks for an outpatient consultation and then you have to request a colonoscopy where patients have to be prepared and have their bowels prepared, um, then um, that would typically take another two weeks um, and then there's very little time to communicate with the patient. Um, so that really forced our hand and we thought, well, how can we uh, implement straight to test patients for our lower GI cancer patients who, who largely need colonoscopy? Uh, what we came up with is a, is a nurse-led triage service where um, patients are referred in from the GPs uh, and the patients were being triaged uh, into those people that looked like they would be suitable for a colonoscopy um, and those that really needed to be assessed in an outpatient clinic. Um, and what we found is that we, we reckoned we could um, uh, triage about 75% of patients this way uh, and prevent them from coming to a, a nurse-led clinic appointment. Um, to make sure that we weren't missing any patients, the uh, uh, nurses uh, did a brief telephone uh, consultation with the, the patients triaged onto the straight to test pathway just to review their symptoms, make sure that nothing had been missed and to make sure that um, they uh, were suitable for a colonoscopy uh, and they were counselled and prepared appropriately for a colonoscopy. Uh, but that telephone consultation could be done within one to three days of the referral rather than uh, patients waiting typically seven to 14 days for an outpatient uh, appointment. Uh, in, concert with that, in concert with that, we uh, also uh, allocated special slots in the uh, endoscopy department, which meant that we could normally get uh, our patient's colonoscopy within a week. Um, so when it was introduced, uh, we were aiming to get patients uh, triaged and uh, into the colonoscopy for their test within two weeks. Uh, so that was roughly halving the time it was taking to assess these patients. So we were probably up and running for several months before COVID and things were ticking along very nicely. Uh, when COVID came along, um, the first thing that happened was that endoscopy services stopped overnight because of concerns that colonoscopy was an aerosol generating procedure um, and that putting patients through colonoscopy was putting staff at risk. 
Um, some patients we, we managed to uh, scan with a CT scan uh, to try and uh, diagnose cancer, but a lot of patients were triaged into lower risk patients who were perhaps, or lower risk of having cancer, but high risk of coming into hospital having tests. So those patients' pathways had to be delayed um, uh, until the situation with COVID died down. Uh, when the situation resolved a little bit and the endoscopy um, department was reopened on a larger scale, uh, we had a significant backlog of patients to get through. Um, so two things changed really. The first was that in primary care in GP practices, um, GPs had, uh, were now uh, given access to a, a test of um, patients' poo called a FIT test, which looks for microscopic traces of blood. Um, and this was just starting to be introduced prior to COVID, uh, and during COVID the, the avail availability was accelerated. Um, and what the FIT test enabled us to do is to try and prioritise which patients who, uh, that were suspected of having cancer needed their tests more urgently, were more likely to have cancer. Um, so for a time we were um, triaging the investigation of patients. The other significant impact of COVID was that the capacity to see patients for face-to-face -face consultations was dramatically reduced. Um, so across the board, we were doing a lot more telephone consultations. Uh, and what we found um, when we were doing more uh, uh, consultations for suspected cancer patients over the phone is that we could probably triage a lot more patients over the telephone on a straight to test route uh, than we previously thought. So before COVID, we were um, triaging and putting people down the straight to test pathway about 75% of the time. Uh, whereas since COVID settled down and the whole pathway is up and running again, um, more than 90% of patients are now having a telephone consultation uh, and we're triaging them over the phone and, and sending them off straight for investigations. Uh, there is still a need to see some patients in clinic if they've got um, uh, uh, an abdomen or a bottom that needs examination or if they have language difficulties. Uh, but now we're seeing that the large majority of patients we can send down a straight to test pathway satisfactorily. Um, so a lot of other cancer pathways um, were doing variations of straight to test anyway. For example, in breast cancer they have a, um, a one-stop clinic where patients attend for the first consultation, have all their tests there and then. Um, we are um, developing this pathway for patients with upper GI cancers, so some of those patients have had straight to test um, pathways, but we're looking to try and see if we can uh, increase the number of patients with suspected cancers of the stomach and the gullet um, or the liver or pancreas um, for those patients to, to have a, a speedier diagnosis and go through a one-stop um, process. Um, so we're currently training um, staff to be able to assess these patients as well. So I'm sure there's definitely other situations um, in which this pathway would be applicable, maybe not just within cancer but other uh, medical diagnoses where there's a, a need to try and make a rapid diagnosis or um, provide reassurance to, to patients. Uh, the, the pathway is uh, a testament to the, to the hard work and diligence of all the nursing staff and admin and support staff that have been involved um, in uh, running the pathway, but also helping to refine it and make changes so that we've got a very smooth running pathway um, that I think is a fantastic um, resource for the hospital. My name is Debbie Armour and I'm the Upper GI Cancer Care Pathway Navigator for the RDS team. I'm Tracy Christison and I'm the Care Pathway Navigator for the Lower GI team and we both work in endoscopy. So I'm the Lower GI Navigator and we have clinics from our ACPs who then recommend any patients that need support with attending appointments, if they need help with transport, communication um, and we are there to ring that patient and help them attend their appointments. We also follow up 
um, and check when all their investigations will be and ring the patients again to remind them. This isn't all the two week wait patients, <clears throat> it's just the patients that we think need extra support. Uh, my roles uh, mirrors the same as Tracy's, so our patients come through referred by the GP on a two week cancer suspected pathway. Um, normally they come in as a straight to test patient for investigation, um, some require a face to face clinic appointment and some require a telephone consultation. The patients that we find are vulnerable and need extra support are the patients that we pick up and effectively pull them and support them through the pathway. Shahida Khalil, Project Manager for the Community Diagnostic Centre at Mexborough Montague Hospital. The NHS is set to radically overhaul the way MRI, CT and other diagnostic services are delivered for patients, recommended by a major report to the NHS England by Sir Mike Richards. The Diagnostics Recovery and Renewal Report advises that over the next five years, CDCs should be used to both reduce the post-COVID backlog and meet the ever-increasing demand for elective diagnostic services. The report adds that any new services that need to be implemented over time requiring significant investment in facilities, equipment and workforce alongside replacing outdated testing machines and all of these must be on a non-acute site. With the aim of providing services in the heart of local communities, the new service model is expected to deliver quicker and easier access to screening and greater convenience to patients. Last year, Montague Hospital was selected to host one of the community diagnostic centres within South Yorkshire following a £3 million investment from South Yorkshire and Bassett Law Integrated Care System of which Doncaster and Bassett Law Teaching Hospitals has received around 230,000 of capital funding so far. Managed as part of a five-year project, the first step was completed in January as mobile MRI and CT units were placed on site following the construction of suitable foundation pads by the Trust's Estates and Facilities teams. The mobile units provided the ideal solution to the challenges during the planning and development of the new CDC infrastructure. They were an effective means of bolstering capacity at our pre-existing facility at Mexborough Montague Hospital. The scanners were working throughout winter and into spring, providing a suitable alternative for local residents and particularly those that reside within the Dern Valley to receive crucial hospital care within a community setting that's convenient to them. Partnership working delivery capability and flexibility of existing good quality estate have been critical factors in successfully delivering the services of the CDC and over 2,500 scans have been completed at the Montague Hospital Community Diagnostic Centre in Phase 1. Now plans have been developed by the Trust Strategy and Improvement Team and estates and facilities with clinical leads to take the project forward into Phase 2. The Phase 2 business case is being submitted in the coming weeks and we are hopeful that it will receive the approve, approval necessary from the regional and national team for further funding. Approval of this funding will enable the work to start on Phase 2 of the project which includes an endoscopy suite and continuation of CT and MRI with the addition of ultrasound. Diagnostics play a pivotal role in healthcare and we aim to ensure that we improve productivity, maximise efficiency and reduce the capacity and demand gap in the coming years. <laughs>